December 15, 2023. Guys, you're looking at the latest information on the tracking of the X 2.8 solar flare that we had yesterday. Set a major X 2.8 solar flare on Thursday, December 14th, propelled a halo CMA into space. That's what you're seeing on the right there. Halo means it kind of came out of many angles from the sun, and so it has a wider impact. Most of the plasma is headed to the west. However, an Earth-directed component is still evident. A passage past Earth is predicted on December 16th with moderate G2 geomagnetic storms. They will be possible. Now remember, even a glancing blow from a X2.8 solar flare can have some impact. And when you look at the new model on this, you'll see what I'm talking about. The solar wind speed is going to jump and the plasma density is going to be very strong. Let's take a look at that. And this is what it looks like, guys. In the middle, you have the sun. The green dot is our planet Earth. The blue and red dots are two satellites out there, stereo A and B. You've got two different charts to your right. One is plasma density. That's how thick that proton cloud is, and it's in centimeters cubed. Here's the density that's going to hit uh, stereo A again in the red. Stereo B here, it's going to be a little further south. And then here's the solar wind speed radial velocity. We're going to be seeing close to 700 kilometers per second. Right now, we're elevated in our solar wind speed. We've had two incoming CMEs. One was uh, last night. One was today. I'll show you the solar wind speed on that. And then the first one that occurred at 11.55 when the power went out temporarily up in New York, this thing was at full speed, and then it dipped back down, and the second one came in. But this is the X.2 uh, X flare again. Now, notice right here, a lot of times I've said you'll see the plasma density chart start at 5, go to 10, 15, maybe 20. But when they're in, uh, in expecting a, a more dense impact, they're going to raise this chart level. And we're going to be approaching 60 centimeters cubed, and that's strong. Now, in the solar wind speed here, again, 700 kilometers per second, you can see the, what's happening on both uh, the planet and both satellites. As we play it through, they're saying we're getting a glancing blow, but I'm going to pause it. I'm going to show you how it looks. Let's let it play forward. It's about to leave right there. One behind it right there. Let me back, I'm going to back it up just a hair. I'm going to point out something. Even though the glancing blow that the planet's getting, we're in the strongest section. See how thick it is and how dark it is? This is the weaker section. You can just tell by looking at it. Look at the uh, plasma involved in this one. But we are down here in the tail end where it's wider and looks like it's going to be the strongest. That's why they've jumped this plasma density up right there. As we play it through, it's going to pass by Earth. We'll let it play on through. Now, bring it back. Let's look at impact times. Right here, it looks like a brick wall. Right there. Now, tomorrow on the 16th, at 1500 hours, universal time. 1500 hours is 3 p.m. in the afternoon. 1200 hours is noon, and then you've got 3 hours. It makes that 15, which would be 3 o'clock. Now, New York is uh, 5 hours behind universal time. Okay? So, that would put it at... 10 a.m. tomorrow. Now, what does that mean? That means the U.S. will be sun-facing, okay? Just pointing it out. And then it's going to last, guys, if we let it play through just a little, pause it here, it's going to fade out on the 17th. So you've got, uh, what, 10 hours or so of impact time here. Now, let me say this, guys. Uh, a lot of people talk about they can feel this once it leaves the sun, before, even before it impacts the planet, because you have a couple things that happen. In this top chart, we're talking about plasma density, which is protons. Okay. That'll take a couple of days to hit our planet, just like we're seeing here. But the other event is a photon event, which is light energy. And that gets from the sun to our planet in 8.2 minutes. You see your radio blackouts and things. And I think that starts the wave of people feeling bad. 
and it can affect your heart. We'll take a look at the chart about that before this video is over. Now, again, 700 kilometers per second solar wind speed. Let's look at that in uh, miles per hour. And just on the quick calculator for this, guys, 700 kilometers per second is 1.566 million miles per hour. Very fast. It slowed down. Remember, it left the sun at 4.7 million miles per hour, but it's still going to be very hard. Uh, it's going to be a hard impact because of the proton density. Guys, and today we had not an X flare, but it was a very strong one. This line right above the M7 right there would be an X one see that right there it would go into the x category so it was a second flare from the same sunspot ar 3515 and it, the further it turns around to the right here to the uh, east wing of this the better we are because it's uh, will not be directly earth facing now this is a solar wind speed the plasma density and the temperature of that for the last three days last night let's move up here to the 14th and at 11.55 p.m. last night in New York, on Eastern Time, they had that blackout. People were trapped in elevators. Something sparked. But what, let's go up to that time. It would be moving into here. You can see that there was a jump here when the impact happened. And then right here at around 4.55 Universal Time, right in this area, right in here, it's when the... Uh, sparks flew in new york again they said it wasn't a lone blackout but the fire department and had to go in and rescue folks out of elevators don't know what else happened there was uh, an explosion there was smoke there was a, a video there about that and i've changed the chart guys to just one day instead of three days and it's the current information here was the uh, first cme coming in right in here at, uh, right in there we saw the blackout in new york now we're into the second CME, moving through here. Right now we're down to around, let's see, 493, 495. At 500 kilometers per second, you're at 1,111,000 miles per hour, still over a million miles per hour. So this is holding steady right now. We had a bump up, and we should see it start to drop before uh, tomorrow morning, when we see the impact of the X flare, guys, again, look at the plasma density here and in these areas 30, 34. And normally it's down in here, guys, three points. See it? We're in the orange, and you can see right here the numbers at the top. That's normal plasma density dropping down. Then the first one, 20s up in here, 36, 37, 42, looks like the highest. And we could expect double that tomorrow and when you see those impacts especially the straight up ones always watch for impacts on our tectonic plates it may be a lot of large five spread out or it could be some six or sevens uh, spread out in some of the uh, more dangerous fault zone areas now this is the sun starting back on the 13th two days ago let's play it forward you're going to see a couple of x flares and let me top that and back this up Everybody caught that, I'm sure. Let's come back here. Move it back forward right there. Let me just pull it back a little. Let me go. It's kind of fast right there. But that object, guys, that's coming between the satellite and the sun right here is the Earth. The SDO satellite that we're looking at is in a figure eight pattern kind of behind our planet sometimes it will be lower in that lower loop of the figure eight and then sometimes it will be higher and when it does that the earth or the moon can pass in front of the between the satellite and the sun it's still giving us earth facing perspectives but it's unlike some of the other satellites that are between the earth and the sun this one is again in a big figure eight pattern behind it 12 cameras on it and that's what you're seeing right there is the earth come through there now, let's play it through, and you're going to start to see the X flares and the other events here. Coming up here, the flares are starting. That's the big sunspot, you right corner. That was the first of two. That's the second one. There's the X flare. That's three. We saw two last night. Now we're going to get this almost, and if it had been a little more 
earth facing guys, I think it would have been a next flare because we got a side glance. Again, there went the earth. If you see the moon come through there, you're going to see very jagged edges instead of that round, uh, smooth image. Let me back it up now. It looks like it's fully loaded. Let's come back here. Right there. It's very fast. Anyway, that's what we're dealing with. So we got those flares coming through. We got, we're tracking the one, the 2.8 X flare. We haven't seen any tracking on this last one. That's almost an X flare. I think it would have been again if uh, the one coming up now, if it had been more earth facing because the, that's how the our detectors pick it up. Now, guys, this is a different satellite. This is called LASCO. This is C3. Last night in the video, you saw a red image with a comet coming in. Same satellite, but it was a much closer image. And again, it was in a red filter. This is a composition of the much wider image and the energy fields basically around this. Check it out. The white dot is the sun. This blue area here is called an occulter disk. What they've done, unlike the uh, satellite we just saw where you could see the images directly on the sun, but you really couldn't see around it because it was too bright. This darker section right there is the arm that holds this up there. Now this is uh, imprinted over the actual disc itself, but it's like holding your hand up, you know, if you're looking up in a tree to block the sun. And this is this arm is like on a satellite dish. You've got a little arm that goes out there and your LMB or LMBF is out on the tip. That's what we're dealing with here. And you'll notice this comet here, much wider view again, will dim out when it goes behind the arm. Now look over here in this graph right there. There's the comet. Here's the sun. Let's play this thing through amazing images and you're going to see some of these explosions. Right there, there's a comet. Notice it dims out behind that arm, makes that beautiful arc. It does not make it around the sun. It, the gravity of the sun overcame it as it may be in the last time it was here. It made it a loop around it. It didn't this time. But notice here, look at the energy you do not see. Look at that. You're seeing visual images of light. Here is, you wouldn't see this with a normal uh, camera see look at that guys right there that's kind of what they call basically a halo cme more to the right but it circumvented the sun I'll let it play through just a little more it's, everything's running slow tonight but again that is i'll back it up and play it there's the comet coming in M amazing images to me and then the energy from these explosions that we're tracking on the cme trackers Here's your timestamp there, and then the full one coming up to the right. And notice how it looks here. That's the small one, and we've got a strong one coming up. I think that's a one we're going to be dealing with. There, right there. That's the X.28 flare, guys. But listen, we're watching this. You watch it, and this is, look. As it comes out, let me back it up just a hair because it's just updated. Right here is the one that was almost the next flare. Check that out. Very, very powerful. Very powerful. Anyway, we're watching this, guys. I'm, I'm going to put a link to warnews247.gr in the link below this video because things are moving very fast in Ukraine. Russia's sweeping it faster than a German blitzkrieg, and uh, they're in panic mode right now. But guys, we're watching this. You watch it. It's a heads up. Be safe. Remember, tomorrow morning, 10, approximately 10 a.m. East Coast time is the approximated time of impact for the X 2.8 flare CME. And that means what? I said it before. The U.S. will be Earth facing. So will South America when it strikes, just like. Tokyo was when those X flares hit it in uh, on March, in March of uh, 2011, when the Fukushima disaster happened. So you got to watch these events, especially when you get into the stronger flares. They said it was a glancing blow, but you saw in the uh, actual tracker model that 
the earth is going to take the brunt of the strongest part of that CME. But guys, it's a heads up. Be safe.